This is the all new Fedora 38 and it comes with so many electrifying features that it will blow your mind. The newest version of the popular Linux distro brings exciting new features and improvements to make your computing experience even better. An enhanced desktop, even better software selection, a couple of new surprise pins, yeah. Fedora 38 is a power packed release that's bringing a lot of new things. A new version of Fedora is always a big deal because it comes loaded with the newest tech, new package versions and a new experience for you. It's state of the art technology brought to you in one incredible package. I'm really excited to talk about Fedora 38 today because of the sheer number of new things we are getting here. So let's jump right in. Starting off, we get the latest GNOME that is GNOME 44 here. Now GNOME 44 is bullish on improvements. Along with polishing touches here and there, we also get big improvements in the settings app, file manager and quick settings. Continuing the work that started with GNOME 40 series, the developers have done the work to improve the desktop with this version. We see improvements throughout. The screenshot icon here gets a redesign. Even few icons in the menu from LibreOffice family get redone and man, do they look gorgeous or what? This new quick menu has been getting all the attention and now GNOME developers are giving attention to the finer details. The buttons with multiple options like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and power profiles now get a subtle split to differentiate the toggle and more options. This is nice work. I always adore GNOME desktop, but comparing these newer toggle style buttons to those older drop downs, man, these are such an improvement. Why didn't we think of these sooner? GNOME 44 also brings a new Bluetooth button here. It now shows you a list of connected devices and lets you connect or disconnect devices quickly here. This is just great work as this is something that will be very useful in today's wireless era. Before GNOME 44, we had to open up the settings app to select Bluetooth devices. We use Bluetooth earphones, speakers, mouse, keyboard and stuff. Now it will be more convenient. We don't want the wrong sounds coming out of the wrong speakers now, do we? This quick menu now also shows applications that are running in the background without any windows. Now applications like messengers, media players and other applications like Discord, if they are running in the background, you'll be able to see them here and also close them directly from here. While on Linux, background apps are generally not a problem like they are on Windows because Linux apps are built with better ethics. Still, it's good to see this option here as it's going to increase both the transparency as well as your control over your system. GNOME 44 also brings an improved settings app with many design enhancements this time around. The mouse and touchpad settings panel has been reworked with the addition of videos that demonstrate the different available options. Before, we just had a switcher which really didn't provide any information. But now, you know what exactly these settings do. Along with mouse speed control, now you can also turn the mouse acceleration on and off. Mostly, leaving this on is the best thing but in some rare cases, some people might need to turn it off for finer control. And now you can do that here. The sound settings have also been upgraded to make them easier to use. Some of you might have felt that this panel was a bit crowded. I myself, as a media creator, had to juggle around with volume sliders here. At times, it was hard getting things done here. But things are more organized here now. The old sound panel had a ton of sliders. The new one looks cleaner. Volume level controls have been moved into a separate window, making the more commonly used output and input controls easier to access, and fine-tuning the sound a layer deeper. It is now possible to disable the alert sound, and a new alert sound window makes it easy to browse and select the alert sound. Great job here. Accessibility settings get a complete redesign. Again, all the crowded settings here have been nicely organized in a consumable manner. I really like the new design. With these little logos and clean design, I feel that accessibility settings here are going to be more accessible. And now, people will know what all options are available for their particular needs. There's also this device security screen under privacy. Now, this was actually included in the last release of GNOME itself, but major distros like Ubuntu stripped it off because of how alarming this screen looks with its red icons. See, this is a very informative feature. I always encourage you to take security and privacy enhancing steps, but this screen shows these red alerts to just about everybody, and it can cause paranoia to people who are new to Linux. So I really hope that GNOME developers redesign this page to better represent the information that it is providing. Major rework is needed here. Now, you can quickly share Wi-Fi connections to your smartphones by scanning a QR code. A unique QR code is generated for all Wi-Fi connections that are logged into on your computer. All you have to do is scan this QR and you'll be logged into the network. No need to search for Wi-Fi, no need to type in the password, none of that. This is a cool little feature and I don't have to let everybody know how much I love Linux Torvalds every time I share my Wi-Fi password. The file manager here has also been upgraded to the latest version. 
We get file manager version 44 here to match the GNOME version. When using the file manager in list view, you can now expand directories or folders. While double clicking on a folder will open it up for you. Now you can also do this for quick navigation. This is a fantastic feature to have. Now this is not something that everybody needs, not everybody will use. This feature will be used mostly by programmers, so this feature has been made optional. You can jump into the files preferences and turn it on or off. This is a nice touch to the file manager as it will quickly let me get an overview of my projects. While Fedora is a great system out of the box, there are things that can be enhanced. So make sure to check out my video of the 20 things you must do after installing Fedora 38. Now we are not going to talk about the obvious things like changing the wallpaper here. But I'll give you practical steps on how to get blazing performance, faster internet speeds, better battery life and get many more realistic improvements and overall a great Fedora experience. So definitely check out that video. Alright, moving on to some super exciting non-gnome news. Fedora gets two new spins with the 38 version. Fedora spins are official variants of Fedora that come with other desktop options like KDE Plasma, XFC, Cinnamon and many more. And now, two more awesome desktops join the family. Firstly, let me introduce Fedora Budgie. Now I'm absolutely stoked for this. Budgie Desktop is a popular desktop from the makers of Solus Linux and it has its own fan base. Budgie is a super polished traditional desktop. This desktop is something that everybody just gets. You can be a Linux newcomer or an experienced Linux user. You'll get comfortable here very fast. Budgie has a bottom panel based workflow with an organized menu here. All your apps are organized categorically and we also get a fast search. Your favorites and running apps are pinned here for quick access. This is my favorite way of using a computer. Budgie's highlight is its notification drawer called Raven. This doubles as a customizable widgets bay where you can place various widgets according to what suits you the best and then you also get all your notifications here. Budgie is super polished and it's just great to use. This is built using GTK. Fedora Budgie will be a great option for people who are looking for that traditional Windows 7 style desktop but don't want to use KDE Plasma. We also get a new Fedora Sway Spin. Sway is an ultra lightweight window manager which uses Wayland and I gotta say, it's pretty good. Now we get things like Waybar and Wofi installed out of the box so Fedora Sway is usable immediately without the need for you to install and configure stuff. But if you're using this, I figure you'll be configuring stuff anyway. The performance is great here and because of Wayland advantages, it is better than i3 and there are no screen tearing and other issues here. If you're currently using Fedora i3, then I highly recommend that you check out Fedora Sway Spin. Fedora 38 KDE Plasma version ships with the latest and greatest version of Plasma that is version 5.27. Believe me when I say the greatest because this is a massive update for Plasma desktop that's bringing many improvements throughout. Plasma 5.27 is also the final version of this desktop's 5 series. Yes, the next version now is going to be Plasma 6 which will be built using a whole new version of the Qt toolkit. With Fedora 38 Plasma, the first thing you'll notice is a brand new Welcome Center app that will take you through the initial steps. It gives a nice overview of the system and comfortably lets you know about the additional features that you can use. It also informs you about the software options and connecting your online accounts and we move forward. The newest Plasma desktop receives touchups everywhere and there are some new features here too. We get a new window tiling mechanism here. Now you can hold down the shift key and drag windows to snap into tiles. Then you can press the meta or the windows plus T key to create a custom tiling layout which you can conveniently use by dragging and dropping applications while holding the shift key. And this tiling system is very flexible. You can comfortably readjust the window sizes by dragging the spaces between windows. I know I'm making it sound complicated but it's fairly simple to use once you check it out. Window tiling is all the hype now and why shouldn't it be? I found out window tiling to be a fantastic productivity booster and with this tiling mechanism here, Plasma developers are on to something. Plasma developers are taking actions to reduce the number of pages in settings which can be overwhelming at times. So many smaller settings have been merged. The tray and widgets on the bottom left have all been polished up. The sound icon now shows you the options to mute all sounds immediately by middle clicking on it. You can also change the volume levels by scrolling on this icon. Actually, you could always do this. But this information was never explicitly given out. Now you can see this by hovering on the sound icon. Now this middle click operation has been implemented on many icons here. For example, if you middle click on the network icon, it put your system in airplane mode. The battery section here has also been updated with support for battery status of peripheral devices like wireless mouse and keyboard. And if you have a multi-monitor setup, KDE Plasma gets easier to handle as all the options regarding multi-monitor are now easily accessible in the tray. 
Kerana, KDE Plasma's Finder gets an intelligence boost to show more relevant results and if no results are available for a particular search, it now gives an option to search the web. Plasma 5.27 also brings high resolution scrolling on Wayland. This makes scrolling on your browser super smooth. I tried it on and it feels like butter. I'm very conscious about these little things and I love the way scrolling feels on both Firefox and Chrome now. Scrolling is not jagged now, even better than before. Discover, Plasma Desktop Software Store has also been retouched with layout improvements. Discover always looked like it's something out of the late 90s and these layout retouches definitely help. I'm glad about this. Flatpaks are integrating more and more into Linux distros now, so Plasma 5.27 now brings a dedicated permission manager for Flatpak apps. In settings, under applications, you can see this. Before this update, you needed to install an application called Flatseal to get this deep control over Flatpak permission management. Now on distros using Plasma, you'll be able to have this control directly from the settings. Plasma 5.27 is a big update and it's amazing that Fedora 38 gives its users access to this. Across all user interfaces, Fedora 38 is bringing big things for everybody. Fedora has been an early supporter of Flatpaks and has integrated Flatpaks right from the beginning. But there was a catch. Once you enable Flatpak from the software store third-party repositories option, Fedora showed you a very limited list of curated Flatpak apps. Now Flathub is the largest repository of Flatpak apps and contains a huge number of software. Anything you want can be found there. But this was filtered on Fedora to display only certain selected apps. For most apps, you had to browse to Flathub web portal and install apps from there. With Fedora 38, the developers have removed this filter. Once you enable Flatpaks here, you get full access to all Flathub apps. This is a great decision as it will make everybody's lives easier now. You can install anything you want directly here and if you want to get traditional RPM packages from Fedora repositories, you can just use the drop down here to toggle the software source. All good things take time, so I guess Fedora developers had to go through the process to guarantee a flawless Flatpak experience on Fedora and the time is now. Fedora has always catered to that open source enthusiast audience and while we get full Flatpak access here, they have given an option to filter out all proprietary apps with a single toggle. This is great thinking by Fedora developers as this one option will keep Fedora truer to its original audience. Fedora 38 is powered by the Linux kernel version 6.2 which is an important update. While this version comes with many improvements and support for additional hardware, I want to touch upon a few big ones. Firstly, this kernel brings mainline support for Apple M1, M1 Pro, Max and Ultra SoCs. While Asahi Linux kernel remains the most suited for Apple Silicon hardware at the moment, this is still a major step forward. Apple Silicon hardware are impressive architecturally and even performance wise. Asahi Linux has already demonstrated impressive performance with still a long way to go. So the inclusion of mainline support for M1 lineup of SoCs makes the future of Fedora on new Apple hardware look optimistic. Linux 6.2 also brings ZSTD compression version 1.5 here. It's an update after almost a year now. This makes systems much faster to boot and launch apps. I remember when Fedora first implemented ZSTD on BTRFS a couple of versions ago and it did wonders for boot speed and even app launch speeds here. Even on older hard disk drives, Fedora with BTRFS and Z standard shows visible speed boosts. Now it should all get even better. So yeah, excited for the update here. Fedora is a cutting edge Linux distro that is also very reliable. A new version of Fedora rolls out every 6 months and it gives us all the latest packages, development tools, compilers and a lot more. This ensures that you are getting the latest of all the tech but without that instability factor. The packages that we get here are all very well tested and reliable. Fedora is used by many software professionals so it is that high quality system. Fedora 38.2 comes with the latest and greatest of all software so you'll be getting a top notch experience no matter what you use Fedora for. Apart from the things that we have already covered, we'll be getting GCC 13, GNU Make 4.4, Ruby 3.2, Golang 1.20 and many more updates. All in all, Fedora 38 is a phenomenal release that brings an array of exciting new things. Fedora 38 is very important because it brings the latest tech and a contemporary computing experience for 2023. Latest desktops with fully loaded features, an updated set of packages, it has everything. This time around, we see a set of small but useful improvements. QR code for Wi-Fi connection, Bluetooth quick settings, improved file picker, two new Fedora spins. Yeah, we get some cool stuff now. You can download Fedora using the link given in the description below. Next up, check out 2023's top 7 Linux distros. I've got some cool ones there that you absolutely cannot miss. So check it out. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. This is Linux Techs, signing out.